Today, I'm gonna to be doing four different recipes and combining them all into one. We're starting with Feed the Swimmer's incredible cauliflower bolognese recipe. As you can see, I'm throwing about a half a head of cauliflower into this food processor. We're gonna to try to get some little chunks out of this. I'm gonna uh, link Feed the Swimmer's entire recipe down below, just so you guys have it and can follow along. I kind of speed through this pretty quickly. Um, it, right here, we're just caramelizing some onions, but it, it'll be much easier. So if you head down to the description, her whole recipe will be down there. Um, it's really easy and absolutely incredible. I was gonna use the whole thing to sort of blend into a paste for a garnish and I ended up saving more than half of it to just eat on pasta because it was overwhelmingly good. One of the best bolognese recipes I've ever made. Um, as you can see, it's uh, we've got spices, some veggies, tomato paste, tomato sauce. You're going to bring that to, not, not quite a simmer, but just until it smells flavorful and then add in your cauliflower and mix that. It's, like I said, I, I can't state how good this recipe is. And I'll, I'll link to her Instagram below. She has a ton of other amazing recipes. So the part we're actually gonna be using for the main or master recipe here, we're going to take an immersion blender and blend that into a paste and then set that to the side. We're gonna be making a mushroom broth to go underneath. You're pretty much just going to finely slice a pound of button or wild mushrooms, bring them to a simmer for 20 minutes and leave a tight lid on. You really don't wanna let a lot of that, uh, that steam go because that's where you're gonna get your good juice. Add some cream, heavy whipping cream and milk to that, mix it up. Over the course of the recipe, I'm gonna be adding a little more cream. It'll be easier to whip. Now we're gonna make our squid ink pasta, which is same as pasta, oil, eggs, flour, but you're just gonna be adding squid ink. One tip I'm gonna add, do not add salt. Squid ink is salty enough, and also make sure you strain the squid ink through something. It's, it can have chunks in it, you just don't want that. You're gonna lightly whisk it and then throw it in a food processor with your flour and your oil. I was a little bit hasty here, got a little excited, uh, prematurely gunned it and should have mixed a little bit in a bowl before putting it in the food processor. So a ton of the walls ended up covered in squid ink. Learn from my mistakes, I guess. And it, you want to get it to the consistency of like, if you've ever been to, uh, oh, that's that terrible store in the mall, Brookstone, they've got moon sand. You want to, it wants to be the consistency of moon sand. It, it'll be really easy to press into a ball of dough. If you've ever made pasta, it's, it's gonna come out about the same. We're not gonna make the filling because we're making a ravioli. I wanted to go with the same sort of theme, so I'm just browning some cauliflower here. We're gonna wait um, until that's nice and brown, seasoned with some salt and pepper, throw into another food processor. It's becoming sort of a trend here. And once that's good, we're gonna grate in some cheese. I use Dubliner. It really doesn't matter. I would use a creamier white cheese and then a tablespoon of mascarpone and a tablespoon of ricotta are gonna make a great filling. Now the whole thing will come together. Take your dough, roll it out, put it through a pasta roller until you get some nice fine sheets of pasta. As you can see, because I like sort of prematurely gunned it when I was processing it originally, it's got some white stripes in it from the flour that didn't get fully emulsiated into the squid ink, which is fine, adds a cool look to it, but just try to do better than I did, I guess. We're gonna be pasting that with water, just a brush and water will seal the pasta. Our 
All right, now comes the only really even slightly technical move of the entire thing, which is the mushroom foam. You're gonna wanna bring it to a simmer, let it go for a tiny bit longer. If, if you're not getting the bubbles you want, like thick sort of creamy bubbles, add a little bit more cream. And then once it's at a simmer, you're gonna turn the heat off and whisk until you get sort of a nice foam going there. And that's gonna make a beautiful base for this recipe. After this, bring a pot to a boil, throw your pasta in. Homemade pasta, especially homemade ravioli, takes seconds. All right, now we're gonna plate. You're gonna start with your foam, get it down in the bottom there. If you're a classless lout like myself, you can do this with your hands. I couldn't really think of a better way to do it. And then I just throw a little foam in and around the sides. When I zoom in here in the next two shots, you'll really be able to see how it looks. And I really just think the, the mushroom foam, it, and I also have to say it tastes incredible. It's not just an aesthetic thing. It is creamy, has a nice, rich mushroom taste it's it's awesome but i really do think it looks great and is a great additive to the recipe i'm now just going to take a teaspoon of that bolognese paste and i'm going to put it on top this really adds just a, a punch of flavor to every single bite Look at that, that looks great. Um, you can see I got a little bit on the wall of the pasta. Uh, you know, that's just being careful with your spoon when you're really putting in that broth around the sides, but it, it came out absolutely beautiful. It tastes incredible. Uh, Feed the Swimmers Bolognese made an incredible garnish. I'm gonna link to everything below. Uh, like, subscribe. This was really fun to make and it tastes amazing. Thank you guys.